Hi everyone, it's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown, as always. I never do this alone. I have the ladies in the building. Jo, Jo, Jo. Why you here? How you doing? Yo, yo, yo. We are in the building. You should be singing yourself well, so that's not here. Oh, gosh. Your makeup looks beautiful, though. Hello, YK. Yo. How you doing? Yeah. Any problems? No. Can you solve them? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I hope you heard, though. Let her come back and sing for me. <laughs> how are you doing, Wiki? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So how was your spa date? Ah, oh, it was... Um, Interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> skin looks, I, I feel like you, your skin looks really good, so probably something worked or you just naturally have a good skin. Well, I had a facial as well, so mm. there was one that I had that I didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what else were you going to tell us? Gonna tell? I was going to say, you know, I wish our leaders eh, mm. would not... Um, Pay so much em emphasis on honourable and excellency titles, and titles, titles. Um, titles. Because I, th I believe that tradition was brought in by the British mm -hmm. <laughs> when they were lodging it over us. Mm -hmm. Because if they pay more attention to the actual work that they do, <laughs> so <instead of> having <laughs> commissioning something and everybody will say they just be hailing you, excellency, excellency. You will think you have done I'm saying one <laughs> wonderfully <laughs> well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Just God! Do the thing. I said my brother was uh, was supposed to run for chairman. I think he ran for chairman sometime. I think he became. Uh, this, they, this, I think he became um, deputy chairman or mm. vice chairman. And he became an honourable. They honourable. They honourable him since like <laughs> forever. <laughs> chairman, chairman. You know that. that like, I don't know. Just say Niger thing. We like yeah. to just be, be giving all these titles. That's chairman. What I'm saying. I think it was. It wasn't really us before. It was brought in and by the British governors. Because a lot of people that do it, even when you contest, when you're about to contest for a position, they start calling you our excellency, his excellency. And I'm wondering, he is just a candidate. Exactly. You are already giving him and that. You don't have to even go and that then far. they lose focus. What happens? They hear them so much. Mm -hmm. They lose focus of what? Because yeah, by the time, and Nigerians, we are very good at it. Yeah, full and, of yourself. And you are the governor, you are sitting down. Excellency, sir. Uh -huh. You have done so, 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 and so, and so, and so. Excellency, sir. <laughs> so, of course, before you know it, your head will become like this. Oh, my God. Let me go to Mara. Mara, how are you good. doing? I'm doing amazing. Great. I got lots of DMs yesterday and messages. People asking me about how I started my cow, my cattle farm. I oh, had really? it for a year. I had it for a short time. One thing I will say is that you cannot do it by proxy. You have to be there, right there involved. and involved. And I wasn't willing to do that. And you know, I was looking at my nails and stuff as well. So, so wait, well, we need, <laughs> we need, we need to, to ask that. you more about that. Like, yeah. so you, she yes, bought two cars. She's a, she's a head woman. I started with my NYC. <laughs> she's a head woman. I don't know. I started with my hey, NYC hey, I put it together. So I bought two cars. I bought two so cars. Tell me though, and tell grew. me. Because what I read was that mm. when you have cattle, mm. like the number you have is your asset. Yes. So when they give birth, yes. is, is what they give birth to that you now sell off? Or you just use it to swap? But the idea is that the number you have must remain. Is that true? Well, for me, it was just to keep growing. I just kept growing. And when it got to a particular so number, I sold, it off. Yes, I sold it all mm. off. So for yes. you, it was an accomplishment to just be growing there? Yes. Mm. Well, my mom had a, a piece of land, right. a good farm area. Mm. And so I just put them there. Uh, but because of the crisis left, right, going to the farm became an right. issue. So Did it you give them names? Did they have names? The very first one was called Burberry. I, I don't get Bur it. Burberry. Burberry. But we honestly, I was so happy. We gave that cow Burberry. That was wow. the name of that cow. Bull is the most important asset, Abby. They don't really kill bulls. I don't know. I think it's the cow. I'm the female cows, cow. Like the, I yeah, no, the no, male the bull, one is the bull. The bull is the male the cow. cow. The ah. female one is the one that gives birth. Oh, right. I just realized that <laughs> you're going to the male cow. It's, it's the female one that bears the right. cow. Right. So right. I used to be. I need to go, to go back there. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, I I think think boy, how are you doing? I'm, I'm very, very good. Um, I'm very, very, very good. I am enjoying every day. Most importantly, I, I, I realize that I'm good with savings but I diagnosed a problem that I had that I didn't know how to invest. So when I save, I then I end up just spending the money. Mm -hmm. So now I am actively working on learning the process of investment. So oh. it's not about savings. You have to save and then invest to oh, multiply the money. Oh, you me that. I don't know. If it's because I, 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 I'm like, you just realize that, yeah, I'm always saving. So what are you using the money to do? Uh, 
Mm. What have you invested your money in the past five years? Please, let's mm. have that conversation because me, <laughs> I have. You know, we need to yeah, have a plan. I don't know how to invest nothing. No. <laughs> yeah, I can save. I can save. I can save. That's, that's, that's I, can save. Save. I pay I myself salary spend. every month. I don't, mm. I don't try to pay myself salary. I can salary. save and I can spend my savings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go on the break. My still don't touch the ground. Yeah. You'll be all right. We cannot leave the chair for you. Let's go on a break. It's Thursday. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, let's start very quickly with the uh, punch. Minimum wage. Labor reacts as federal government denies approving 30,000 naira. Let me read the quote from TUC. They can say anything they want to say. They can call it mere recommendation or whatever they want to call it. But the important thing is that at the end of the day, if we do not get the 30,000 naira, they know what we will do. TUC, end of quote. <laughs> Deny characteristic of uh, Buhari administration says Atiku. Picture here of two young boys, actually, uh, Brick Lane during school hours here in Ogun State, not just next door. And this obviously is child, lab child labor yes, so. or child abuse. Child abuse. Dogara adjourns plenary as house audio system crashes. Mm. DSS parades six suspects over Kaduna Monarch's killing. Senate slashes presidency orders allocation to provide funds for 2019. Um, Rowdy session at Senate probes President CIF and um, Jonathan Shaw P. I met mind-boggling mismanagement on assumption of offices, Buhari. And Ikwe Madu, Senate dismisses police burglary claim, alleges cover-up. Okay. So Ikwe Madu, just a quick update. Okay. Um, yes. Yesterday we said, we talked about how he claims that he was being, he escaped assassination and the police saying that it was actually a burglary attempt. He says that he has video, if the police insist on um, that narrative, he has video to prove that... You know, it was, it's um, not it was a burglary. Burglary. It was an yeah, assassination so. attempt, mm -hmm. and that um, they do, they're not really sure what burglary is, because and I I, I just wanted to put my own comment. Mm -hmm. A burglary is you are sleeping, the arm robbers, the burglars enter, yeah. steal Take quickly and, and run, run, away. run away. When they face you, that is not burglary. Mm -hmm. That is not arm robbery. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. police go and should get their. Definitions, right. yeah. definition, yeah. definitions, right? Vocabulary. And please, let's not make burglary seem like it's not a big deal. Burglary well, is, is a big. You yes. can't come into someone's house yes. and then you say, "Well, it's just uh, burglary." Uh, it was still within the crisis. So a lot, a lot of things are happening to those in the house of um, assembly. It seems late Nigerians prayer. Whatever happened yesterday, however, after they resumed from two weeks in this um, house of assembly, federal house of assembly representative, the sound system stopped working. So the guy was trying to hold the plenary and the system wasn't working. They said, oh, maybe there was a power surge a few days back and that broke down the panel that everything <sighs> within the sound system of National Assembly is outdated. It was done in 1999. They should put money together that, from the and, they, and they, that they've ordered a new set from Germany. Oh, okay. right. That's okay. the part I'm like, they ordered from Germany. Go on, go on. They should and take they, some money from their pocket. And, uh, slumped and died, sorry, before I tabo on set. <laughs> he slumped and died at the airport. Uh, oh. Adileke, Ademola, Ademola, oh. Adileke. Yes, yes, yes. He was just go going to catch his flight and then boom, oh. he just fell down. Mm. That's by, by the time they got the... Did he you was get the age? Hmm? Was he young? Or they didn't say he was age. They said they don't even know the flight. Self. He got there at mm. 5.30. Yeah. Let's move on to the nation. Well. He's so rest in peace. Really, yeah. really sad story. I read that story too. Moving on to the nation. Buhari article clash over 30,000 minimum wage. Picture here of Prince Charles uh, being presented the Anthony of Benin. The anthology, actually, Anthology of Benin History by Oba Eware II. <laughs> OPEC, OPEC uh, outputs cuts likely next year. Ikwere uh, Madu's Senate demands probe. Police confirm abduction of Catholic priests and how 28.2 billion Naira ecological fund was looted. I see the major headline. Yes. So, um, the, in a sort of anticlimax drama, the TUC, NLC, everybody called off um, the strike. The strike, claiming that they had an agreement. Now the presidency, through um, Lai Muhammad, said that there was no agreement. What the presidency did was to accept the recommendation. I wonder why the NLC and TUC will call off a strike without having proper documentation signed that what they wanted to go on strike for was going to be agreed on. Because mm -hmm. now it's not like they said, we said, whatever it is, we will still down to what, 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 what the minister also said is that the president is going to look at the reports mm -hmm. and will give his feedback very soon. Mm -hmm. But 
what there was a meeting. Remember, yeah. there was a meeting, a three-year yeah. travel meeting, Before. where they finally agreed on um, thirty thousand naira. What, 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 what presented to the board? Eh? Maybe it's the way the papers. Eh, no, carried but the papers yesterday no. said actually said the, the president had agreed. Yes, that's how we because all... that's what the TUC also thought he had agreed. So if you actually were thinking he had agreed and called your strike, shouldn't you have gotten a document signed? To say that it's like this, they, it was like they sold us out, sold the workers that they were representing out, sort of. Not necessarily. Let's wait. Let, they said the, the, if the president does not, you know, accept do it, it, accept it, then. But somebody who sells you out to not be saying that if you don't agree to that, that's not yeah, going to go back to the street. So I don't think it's fair to say that. I can't that. understand. So what was it the president actually said yesterday? He collected the recommendation. Okay, well, I have collected it. I will now go and read it. Or maybe the interpretation of the collection was that he had accepted. And now they're saying, no, he hasn't accepted. He needs to read the report and then declare because an even, acceptance. Because even you, or your view, yes, we, said that he has accepted. Yes, well, the papers, we're only talking about the papers. papers What's our topic? We're saying what the papers said. No, no, even now, we are saying what the paper says. <laughs> oh, that's true. We talked about it yesterday. Yes, 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 yes. we talked about it yesterday. So I'm, I'm, better than I'm, <laughs> Let's I'm not confused. <laughs> I'm <a> confused, Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Daily Sun. <laughs> Vote by split senators. Thank God, our now I remember, our conversation yesterday was to discuss it. Yes, mm. and how as it young affect people. us. Does mm. it make sense mm. to us? That was a, so we didn't really discuss the confirmation or mm. the approval. Okay. okay, Daily Sun. Vote by split senators. Uh, Prince Charles receiving copies of the Red Book, an anthology of Benin uh, history by the Oba Owari II. New minimum wage, Buhari will decide after stunning report. I just said that. God, don't butter my bread. Prince Charles spoke English. No, spoke pigeon. Mm -hmm. pigeon. Senate seeks national burial honor for Tony Anene and attack on the Query Madu police under fire. So Prince Charles is speaking English, speaking yeah, Pigeon. He yeah. spoke some. He said um, he had been in Nigeria the last time, almost 30 years, you know, before. And so because of that, God don't butter his bread. He also said something about Nigerno de carry last, you know, oh, those things. Cool. He just dropped them. That in means his he did his research. Yeah. Yeah. He was in his speech now. He was in his speech. <laughs> He, he was talking about jollof fries and said he's not going to, to get so a, a PR company just sat him down. So, you know what? Yeah, they go to Nigeria, yeah. same way they gave this one. Is he a dread jacket? Yeah, a yeah. dread jacket. Is that dread the, jacket? The, they gave, yes, um, yes. No, Ankara. Um, was Ankara, Ankara jacket. jacket. That's the, the PM. The, the Prime Minister. Um, Theresa May. So, they prepped him. These are the words you're going to use. You know, and that tripped us, and he entered the papers. No, but the point is, he's gone to Benin City, and my expectation is that they still have artifacts from Benin. But why are they giving me another gift instead of them to be asking for their own? No, it's the book. The book. The book is the book, um, a book written ah. by. Remind them where those artifacts yes. are from. I guess the book is written by <laughs> the Oba. Like, yeah, at least we're, we're, we might get our artifacts back. Mm. Moving yeah. on now. Yeah, right. <laughs> to New Telegraph. Uh, primaries. How APC governors put Oshemole in trouble. DSS Grills Party Chairman Okorocha are also linked with the plot. APC finds ignorance. PDP says president tolerating, tolerating corruption. There's a human interest story here. I killed, slept with my mother's corpse for money ritual. Says teenager. Oh my God. Senate probes Buhari, Jonathan over intervention funds. Uh, Senate reduces power sector's budget by 25.5 billion naira. I wonder why. And um, Kaduna court denies El Zagzaki bill. I think that's his wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the human interest human story. Human interest story. Right. This is. A sad story. 18-year-old um, Akpo Bome Samuel from Delta State um, killed his mom and kept her corpse in the house for two days and proceeded to have, you know, sexual relations with the... <laughs> yeah, sexually... Sex. 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 Okay, <laughs> sex with the mother. And while yeah. he was... Because there's yes, no relation the you can have. I don't know the word, the proper word to use. It's so... Uh, I cringe. So his grandma cut him while he was, what? you know, doing what he was doing. Ew. And of course, alerted everyone. He said that there's this ritualist who sells drugs in their community who had asked him to do that, um, kill his mom, keep her body for two days, cut off her ears and her fingers, <sighs> and he would give him 50,000 thousand naira and that was why he did it the old person old he's an 18 year old boy he says his day job is working at a pure water factory he's sorry that he did it but it was the ritualist that asked him to do it the thing we're treating is very very vital the the role of parenting the role of community parenting mm. personal parenting raising kids with the right values mm. Not even that, Joe. It's poverty now. I, I, no. Everything. Sometimes, no, 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 sometimes, no matter how poor you get, thing that some things you will down never to do. Poverty and desperation. People need fifty thousand. No matter now. how poor you get, 
when you have values, there are some things yes, you will never do. Lack of values. It it's the values. values. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, no, I, I, I don't think I can take any more papers right now. Is yeah. it values? Because yeah, for a boy to go and look for 50,000 naira, obviously he's living in abject mm. poverty. He even, he well, the, the boy money. said, my mom money didn't do rituals. anything. Said, my mom didn't do anything to me. I just did what the ritual is. It, 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 it goes back to the fact that, because uh, if he had the basic needs of life, he wouldn't Or they would say jazz. his mother. No, but he works now. He's but just how, values. How, how he can works. He earns money. You should go and do Kill this. your own mother. To, not to, no no okay. matter what. I don't even care if it's yeah. kill your mother. Anything. How can the ritual say you go and do this? And that's what our leaders are willing to see. We just see no roads, no power, no water. But we're not seeing... Have how the adverse affect, effects how on, on how on it's the affecting human, the human yes. beings individually. Yes. People are killing themselves every day, killing their families, killing their loved ones. It goes, it goes back to, to the economic situation in this country. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, have you ever wondered why your children sometimes behave in unpleasing ways? Well, we'll discuss with Praise for West. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Welcome back to your view. Thanks for staying with us. So sometimes parental efforts are hardly enough these days in bringing up a child, a child properly. We believe we've done enough until they turn 12, 13, 14. We begin to discover all sorts of traits how do you manage, or how do we manage, external influences on our children? With us today is the author of the Out of the Box Parenting, Mr. Praise Fulwell. Welcome to the show, sir. Oh, my pleasure being here. Good, good to here. have you. Yeah. Um, you can join us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag UofUTVC, so we can read your tweets. All right, so... Uh, we started the series a couple of, was it last week we started or two weeks ago? Last week. And, and we, we've started talking about how we can be better parents. Mm. Now today our focus really is in external influences on children. How do we manage, you put in everything, all your efforts to get these children to have the information they need. And somehow when they start getting to that teenage, you know, 10, 11, 12, so many factors out there. And sometimes they don't, they don't turn out mm. as we expect. What causes this and how can we prevent this from happening? Okay, so you're talking about handling an inherent child, basically, yes. from what I'm hearing. Now, a lot of parents don't know that um, an erring child is not a bad child. Okay. You know, because we, we, we need to situate it. An erring child, you know, sometimes can be a troubled child. In fact, it could be a misunderstood child. Hmm. And sometimes I, I like to say an erring child may be the main actor mm. in an unpleasant situation, mm. in an unpleasant scene, rather, because our life is like a movie. Right, so you have different scenes, and you have been through those scenes, you know, in your life. You know, so when you understand that, then it helps you to know that um, in the parenting quadrant, your child is the seed. Now, in agricultural science, you have the seed and you have the wheat. Now, what your child manifests that you call unpleasant or you don't like are what we call wheat. Wheat are unwanted, um, you know, growth, you know, within yeah. the, the... Now, the problem is... If I ask you, when you notice, let's say you've planted, uh, you know, something and it comes out and you notice the weed, what do you attack? The weed or the, the plant? Okay. Oftentimes, we <coughs> attack the plant. Now, a typical like, um, farmer will tell you that what you should attack is the weed, and you even attack the weed with caution because in trying to approve the weed, you may hurt mm -hmm. the plant. Mm -hmm. So what we need to understand is you first find out, is my child troubled? or am I misunderstanding my child? Because oftentimes we see things the way we are, not the way things are. Now, in helping your child, there are several things we need to understand. You know, so um, you are a parent who is introverted and you have a child who is extroverted. You know, you don't like noise, the child loves to make a lot of noise. So you will get worked up when that child, so you try to silence him and because his potential will find expression outside, he goes out and it's someone else outside, it's someone else inside. Then after a while, by the time he gets to teenage years, he wants to assert his independence, which is what the teenage years is all about. Okay. I want to be independent. Oh, I mean, yeah. teenagers feel, they say that uh, between ages one, um, one, two, three, children feel that my parents know everything. Right. From four to six, they feel my parents know a lot of things. From six to eight to, to nine, my parents know some, some things. things. Yeah, from <laughs> nine to 12, my parents know a few things. From 13, they know nothing. <laughs> My parents know nothing. Yes, talk, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, the last time you were on the show, although this was behind the scenes, I was telling you about my seven-year-old yeah. that would say to me, 
I'm going to, you've asked me to do five of mm. this. I'm not doing five. I'm going to do three. Yeah. I, I can do five, but I won't do five. Yeah. I will do three. Yeah. And to me, I'm saying, my Gosh, child, I you you know, set your my, my, this is a bad child. And you said <laughs> to me, no, what is the positive out of it? And I, didn't, I couldn't see the positive. So when he does the three, what do you do? Do you appreciate him, applaud him? No, okay. I, w I knock his head. Okay, so you knock his head because... Uh, <laughs> so to do five. Yes. Well, because you want him to do five, it means that what you are fi fixated on is the end result, not the, pro the process. process. You should obey his So parents. what we say to parents is you need to celebrate progress, right? Which many of us... So when you say troubled parents, I mean, ch parents with troubled children, I mean, they come to my office consistently and they're agitated. And I'm like, hey, your child used to... I mean, you say your child smokes, for example, every day. Now, so he doesn't smoke twice. I mean, now smokes twice a week. I say, have you seen any progress? Say, no, 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 he's still smoking, but there's progress. Right? So you need to celebrate progress and observe progress. We don't observe progress in this part of the world. We're learning. Yeah. Okay. We're learning. We're learning. Yeah. Okay, let me ask. Wait. We're hanging Sorry, there. Go, go, go ahead. Talk away. I, was, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask about, um, you know, when we talk about troubling children, there are different grades of troubled mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. <clears throat> there is the grade of lying and stealing. Yes. Mm. You know, and it's one of the things we like to spiritualize and pray against. Yeah. But I was confronted with the reality of my kid playing both sides in school. Mm. So he went to school, mommy was not around for three days. I'm wondering, the woman, the child asked me that, I know you're very busy, you don't have to say, eh, 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 I'm not busy. The only thing I do is take care of my kids. I, I close at three to face mm. them. So what do you mean? He said, you were not around for three days. I was not around, and I now face my son, like I'm not around for three days. Say, well, she wasn't around for one day. <laughs> so <laughs> you lied. Mm. You know, I was careful <laughs> to say you are a liar. I said, Good. you yeah. lied. Mm -hmm. But the point is, how do I do? Because that was one lie two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There was another one this week <laughs> where he told me, the teacher, my teacher doesn't like me. Because I'm like, why are you not doing well in this course? He said, my teacher doesn't like me. No, I don't have any friend in the class. Nobody's talking to me. So I went to the school. Teacher, what did my son do to you? Mm -hmm. He said, but I gave you water yesterday. We were gisting. You came to meet me. You hugged me. What did you say? I said, uh, did you lie again? He said, so the yes. lies. How so, do the so lie? how do I, and this is a six-year-old so child. We, are not, we need to limit it you're, now. You're looking at what? You're not looking at why does he lie? Now, so when, when a child would lie, when he doesn't trust the environment he's found himself to um, take in his truth, right? Or wherein he has realized that, because children don't come here with lies. We taught that we teach them how to lie. So maybe the few times he has spoken the truth, you still yelled which didn't go down well with his esteem. You okay. still beat him, which didn't go down well. And maybe he has spotted that the people who lied around him actually got away from that punishment. Right. So lies become a like way, experience. yeah, a way to, a way to escape, escape the punishment mm. that comes with, you know. So it's what you want to do is to find out what are you communicating to your children that is making them to lie, lie. To, to you, mm. okay? So when you find that, and it's a discussion you need to have to say, you know what, I would appreciate if you tell the truth all the time, you know, no matter what happens. Yeah. I, I need to say something, because I know everyone says one thing, but I'm married to an Ikiti man. Yeah. And shouting is their pastime. <laughs> shouting? Shouting. It's like, for them, it's normal. Mm. When you're talking normal like this, they, they are shouting. Yeah. <laughs> and he, his own way, and I, I've gone to know my husband that, listen, that shouting is just shouting. He doesn't really mean it. Yes. But for a little child, and he makes like, she's my blood, she understands, she understands. I'm like, uh -uh. No, she I'm understand. trying to make him calm down because he grew up in a shouting house. Everybody shouts, it's normal for them to shout. And I'm thinking, I don't need this to pass on to my kids. So mm. she messes up and the first thing you do is scream and mm. shout. After a while, he shows how much love, I mean, he shows her more love mm. than I do. I mean, he's always, the love is excess. And they hug, they dance, they do everything together. But that shouting part, for him, that's the first reaction. Does that harm, or how does he, or does well, he, what's the it, negative it effect of that? It tells on, this, on the confidence of a child. Right. Mm -hmm. right. When you shout, I mean, it goes for all of us, even mm -hmm. adults. When I shout on you consistently, you are not confident, you realize that you begin to stammer, right? So how much more a child, the way children interpret things are very, very different. And you see, we shout on children because we have not narrowed it down to, we've not created a perceptual code for our children. You know, so when people say, I not normally shout, it's not correct. When they see someone who is higher than them, who can punish them, they don't shout on their bosses, they don't shout on their leaders, they don't shout on people they need something from. <laughs> they don't shout on a military man with a gun, right. right? Everybody becomes quiet, you know? So it's not, it just means that you're shouting as an environment. 
And that environment, that weakness that you call weakness, only manifests when you are faced with people below you. Uh -huh. One of the things that has happened to us in Africa, we've all been traumatized in a way and been conditioned in a way that we treat people who are higher than us mm -hmm. with honor and courtesy, but the people below us, we, so what we, con what we complain about in our leadership, we do the th same thing to the people on the house. So your husband needs to create, or your family needs to create a perception code for your children. I ask parents who shout all the time, if Donald Trump sends his child to you and he says, this my son is very stubborn, <laughs> But the only thing we're going to do is, we've heard about you wanting to raise this child for us, but we're going to put CCTV around your house so that we can monitor what you do <laughs> from White House. Your reward is American citizenship <laughs> and maybe um, 10,000 US dollars, I mean, 10 million US I dollars. Tell what that. are you going to do? I want to so tell you that. You are going to see that the same person says, I can shout, I, I was fun, I will beat. Suddenly, <laughs> will come, even when the child comes, I'll say, oh, you know, you know, you know, say, no, 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 I know how to do it. So suddenly, we become the Then we're going to break, I want to use that example to my husband first thing. That's what I could be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Before we went on the break, Waiki had this interesting look. Were you going to say something? <laughs> I was going to talk about my cousin. He's old now. He's my age now. But when we were younger, oh my goodness, he did all the wrong things. He went to, well, he was always at the shrine. <laughs> he used to drink. He used to smoke. And his father, a very prim and proper person, he went, he almost ran mad with the, but my uncle was very strict. He ended up taking my cousin to London. My cousin was so excited that, ah, I'm going to London. But he dropped him in Shrewsbury. Wow. Sh very far. Yeah. My cousin said, here, he said, my life is over. <laughs> no cigar. I won't find a cigar. <laughs> but what happened was, when he got to school, just, ah, what is he going to do about secret? Ah, the child. The student said, I'm bringing out cigarettes. And it wasn't even illegal there. You could smoke in front of the teachers. Mm. Mm. So that means, to stop my cousin smoking, my uncle pillaged foul. Mm. In that kind of situation, what would you do? Okay, so um, you're talking, so when you notice an erring situation, right, as a parent, the first thing you want to do is to calm down. Because agitation never solves any problem. If I lead you to further mistakes, mm. because you will now run around to people who don't have solutions or people who also have their own issues that they are hiding. You know, because so I, I get worried when I see parents, a child is doing something that you don't approve of. Then you bring another parent to come and be talking to your child. You you, to do you like know what their own children are doing? That they are, I mean, I'm asking, how many times have you called them? I mean, have they called you to come and talk to their own children? You know, so you need to calm down. Now, in calming down, there's a process to it. Now, one of the things you need to do is to first pat yourself on the back and calm yourself down, right? Then when you do that, the next thing um, you, you realize is you now um, observe from a vantage position. What that means is oftentimes when you are, det when you are touched, you have the tendency to exaggerate what you're looking at, mm -hmm. right? So it's just have a, a smoke, a, a stick of cigarette. It's not drug, it's not marijuana. But what many of us do is we magnify it, it becomes nice. So what I tell parents is take off to like 10,000 feet above sea level, right? And observe the same thing, you realize that it's tiny. Now, so what you do is separate what your child is doing from what he's not doing, right? Because there are so many good things he's doing that you're not focused on. We exaggerate the bad, we undermine the good because we assume that that's normal. So pick a sheet of paper. Like and, she's exactly yeah. seen her So pick person. a sheet of paper and write out to the left the good things about your child, the bad things about you. You realize that the good list is actually longer. Let, wait, now. let me pause yeah, for a second. I have a call. I have a call on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, are you there? Thanks for calling. <laughs> Hello, Sunday. Yeah, I'm online. Good morning. Go ahead, please. You're live. Yes, I want to contribute to the program. Yes. Yes, I, I have a boy just about seven years old okay so i discovered that he lies so when i discovered that what i did is this i called him that any any day you lie to me i will cut off your ears <laughs> number one number two <laughs> if you do this good, i will not do anything i will forgive you and i know that this boy changed even if he did something that i wasn't there and i called who did we did we did this thing that, that I did it. And if it wasn't the one, I, I wasn't the one, it was the that I did it. I usually say it's yes. So, and of this same, it is the same thing. When you came up from school, I asked me, where's your school bag? He said, it's inside. Let me see your textbook. He said, I didn't bring my textbook home. 
Mm -hmm. So after some time, okay, grab me your bag. I found two textbooks in, in his bag. Okay. Why did you lie? Say, because I don't want to read. Oh, I said, okay, don't read that. Read that. Okay. Hello. Thank you very much, um, I, Sunny. I think I, I think we got the point of what yeah. you're trying to say. And then it's just making me think that it's almost the same oh, thing. Yeah, so and so the, the age, expected, so, the so age. He, he's yeah. saying that he's going to cut off his hair, mm. right? It, that's uh, that's applicable to that age, yeah. right? When he gets to teenage years, he, can't say he that. will know that you can't cut off his hair. So mm. you will begin to say change because him. you don't threaten a child. But into apparently, all of us that have, have kids between of five to seven, eight, we were going through the same thing. Which is expected. Is expected. So can you help? us clarify because you know you said there's expected behavior yes, in your and book and then there's bad behavior yes. can you cl uh, help us clarify expected what is expected and how should we react when there's expected but societal is still okay so bad. so at that age you know a child you know once begins to uh, get influenced by friends so he has friends so a lot of parents don't do things like can you bring your friends home why you sit at advantage position and observe their behavior and their mannerism because they spend most of their time in school mm -hmm. right so when they spend most of their time in school because also we have not done a lot of work by helping our children define their identity, right? What we do is we talk, we give rules and regulations, don't do this, don't do that. I should, you are telling me to do, don't do this, don't do that. You have not told me who I am, right? Because my identity should define what I do. Uh, every misbehavior can be traced to two things, non-discovery of self or non-remembrance of self. So when you have told me, right, I can forget, but you need to give me some time to master it. Right, so when we don't do that, your child goes to school, um, his friends, I mean, they're usually an influencer in their classes, right? Mm. That influencer is usually the child from the home where there's a lot of confidence, you know, so that person becomes like they don't, they look up to outside mm. the teacher, right? And that person has a lot of influence on it. So when your child comes home and he sings a song that you don't sing at home, does something that you don't do at home, you need to find out because they are impressionable at that age and it's very easy for them to learn the bad things, mm. especially when they are out of the environment where they think there's a lot right. of rules and regulations. Let me take Tokumbo. Tokumbo, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, good morning. Sir. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Actually, uh, I just want to contribute to your question. Uh, not only when children are going, they want to be safe. There are certain things we teach them. Just like one of my sisters out there said that if you teach people, they have stigmatized us for shouting, yeah? I think it's Andrew are known for shouting. But if you actually the shouting can even cause some excesses in children, mm. it depends on your brain. If you don't want your children to lie, you have to make them know that certain things will be done if they lie. Like the depression of what you know they like most. So the moment they discover that this is what their father or mother doesn't like to eat, Definitely, they will change from me. All right. Thank you so much, Chukumbo. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned, uh, was it last week, that somebody came to me mm. and told me she's a, she's a minister, and um, in her view, she's done everything right. I mean, she's... A minister in a church or a minister in government? In a church. It's important. A minister in church. You know, and she's done... She, the, the, her children grew up in the way of the Lord. They prayed in the evenings. They did the reading the Bible. Ooh. I mean, they grew up in the proper Christian home. Son assumed a proper Christian home. Well, in her view, proper Christian mm -hmm. home, yes. you know. And her, her teenage son came home over the summer holidays. She was just telling me that. And she found that he was smoking and he was doing some other sexual things that teenagers at that time should not be doing. And she was just confiding in me that, do I know somebody that she can talk to? Because she feels like she's messed up as a mother and it's depressing her. She doesn't even know how to confront the child. She's even depressed. So in that kind of situation, she, the child is obviously erring. But what, what went wrong and how can she solve that okay, problem? Okay, so um, consistently I see parents and I, they say they're bringing up their children in the way of the Lord. And I curiously ask the question, what's the way of the Lord? And they don't know. So, Honestly, it's not been defined. How can you, if you say the way of the Lord, it must be a destination that is defined. There must be things you look out for. There must be skills. They don't know. They just assume that church activity, because if I ask you, for example, you go to church on Sunday, what was preached in your church on Sunday? You're an adult. What was preached? How did you practice it? So you realize that you have not practiced, you've gone for another one on Wednesday, you've gone for another one. And that's where we load that children. Have you been to children's service? If you ask them, I ran a survey and I asked children in the children's service, what's their favorite time in the junior church? They told me it's ice cream time and biscuit time. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the children being raised in the way of the Lord. So we assume a lot of things that you are activity driven doesn't mean your children will be activity driven. I was a pastor's son. I went bad because I just got tired of praying in the morning, pray at night, read psalm in the every little thing you do. They call you say pastor's son. So I went bad intentionally. 
Right? So, your ch a child is most likely reacting to the pain of not allowing, being allowed to grow normally like a proper child. Right. So, and that's what is happening there. So you are not a failed parent. In fact, the only book we read says train up a child in the way he should go, not the way you want him to go. So which means you need to observe your child. So what people do is they benchmark their children against their faith, benchmark their children against their pastor's faith or against established religious order. So when you say, who is a um, child of God? You hear he must be obedient, he must be patient. Competence never show up on their, on their, on their, on their list. The part, yeah. Most of these pastors have their own... Hidden, and well, lives. maybe, maybe it's some of like some, maybe some <laughs> of them. Trust like it will go <laughs> there. The, the pastors that you are saying that they should copy. Mm -hmm. What if the yeah. child has... Is uh, God, is Jesus Christ are copying, copy, not the pastor so, 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 like so, so, that, That's the is issue. What? Is Jesus Christ are copy, not the like pastor So the if you... So Children competence never shows up on their list. Omnipresent never shows up on their list. All the other attributes of God never shows up except the okay. ones that undermine the potential. Okay, let's go on a quick break. We come back. We'll ask some more questions. Take some more calls. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Welcome back to your view. Yes, thanks for staying with us. So, uh, Mariam, was yes. going to say something? Yeah, I go have ahead. Some, the question I want us to look at I went for uh, Edu 360 and we had a psychiatrist come in and she talked about like the physiological changes and mental changes that yeah. happen as you age at different stages yeah. of your life. So you have um, teenagers who are finding their bodies. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they are masturbating. We know that it is bad. It Taboo. Preach it in church is bad, but your body is going through those changes. Yeah. You are a child, you're growing, you're six, you're seven, a boy gets, I don't know, is it erection. proper erection? You know, and things like that. Is it normal? Is it normal? And then we talk about times where they start to lie. And I've read somewhere where it says that a child that lies usually is quite smart to be able to. So what, I'm, what I want us to understand is there's some things that will happen whether we like it or not. Yeah. It's just human. Yeah. And how does that affect us? And so that we're not worrying that our child is erring, but just actually and so The thing is we grow to too old and fast that we forgot what we did when we were their age, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's the thing. You know, so you, you have a 14-year-old and um, you are noticing that he's having a love conversation and you get worried. And I'm asking, but you wrote doxology when you were younger. You didn't receive a love letter. I'm writing this short message to you. If you find you doxology, you wrote it. You know, so why would you not expect that to happen? It just means that they're getting to the age. You know, so that's why we say parenting literacy is very, very key. Now, because, again, you need to separate. I mean, when, why? Um, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. What they taught me mm. is that self kinikon is the, is the temple. Your body is, is wrong. the temple it's, of the Lord. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot pleasure. Self, -ple God bless self, self pleasure. Self pleasure as a for a child okay. is a taboo. Is wrong. Please, can I take it to it? <laughs> now it depends on what That's you call asking you a question. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean so now. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> if, if, if you like turn this place to Bible setting. Yes, man. Ah, <laughs> what is one that you are doing? He says, what do you think of parents that compare their kids? Um, and some even worse, um, to some kids are even worse than theirs. This is Abiodun John. Okay, so you're going to damage question. your child because your child is different, mm. right? It's different. There's no other person like your child. So when you compare your child with someone else, what you're saying is that you prepare the other child to your child, and your child is going to respond to you because it's going to damage their self-esteem. So they're going to look for something to fix the vacuum you have created, which is why a lot of children get into smoking and drug and whatever because they're looking for something that is missing. Mm. Every time you see a misbehavior or an addiction, right, there's something the child is running away from and there's something is running towards. Mm -hmm. So you need to find out what vacuum have you created, maybe through shouting, maybe through comparison, you know, that the child is now looking for his identity up and down. And that's why we say, when you notice something that is wrong, separate your child from what your child is doing. Your child is not his behavior. Behavior. You need to separate it too. Embrace your child, reject the behavior, right? Uh -huh. Then help, yeah, which is very, very key. So you I, only did three things. So I always say to parents, awesome. yeah, you. when you are very, very you upset, when, when you're very, very upset, don't attack your child, right? Do something that contradicts your anger, mm -hmm. right? So it's a good time to hug and to let him know that he's okay, Let me take this call from Nigel State. Morning, are you there? Thanks for calling. Hello? Hello? You think more women will call, but go ahead, please. <laughs> go ahead. Thanks for calling. You sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you all. Yeah, I can hear you. Good uh, morning. This is the first time caller. Welcome, Welcome to the show. 
I would like to make a contribution on this uh, issue about the uh, child. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, God. Sorry, unfortunately, it's delayed. It's, it's watching on the TV. I wanted to, um, Let's go ahead, talk. I wanted to uh, explain something that happened to me, personal experience, that happens based on shouting. Mm. And for a long time, I was just my husband now that I now talk a lot now. But I was always a talker, right from when I was small. But I lost my voice, not literally, but figuratively for many years. Mm. Because I was told talking too much, talking too much, talking too much. And it sort of switched me into doing sciences. I had no business doing mm. it, but I knew that I could talk. So I, I wanted you to break down how this, we, we project expectations of how an ideal child should be yeah. and derail children for what they should accomplish yeah. successfully in themselves. It's very simple. I mean, your first rule, I mean, your first responsibility as a parent is to observe, not to impose. Right, so you sit somewhere and you observe your child. Your child comes with, um, you know, came in there with traits and tendency that if you activate your side, you will see. Now, so many of us are even seen, but our interpretation is wrong because our worldview and our map has been messed up, right? So you have the child who shouts and screams or who talks and says, do this, do this. That's a natural leader, right? So you need to understand that this child is different from the other one who just wants, so you, bought, you just bought a new phone and your child brother is a screwdriver, right? That's an inventor, an explorer, you know, but you beat the child into submission. So you need to understand that when you observe, your child will give you a clue. Mm. And the moment your child gives you a clue, what you're supposed to do is to help him. In fact, the whole concept of parenting is spot the identity of the arrow in your quiver, right? Help groom that arrow to be shot in the direction of a predetermined target in service to God and humanity. Mm -hmm. What it means is observe your child and let your child be. Okay, so let what me What did Tiger Woods' father say, right. for example, that made him take, that made him buy him golf kits? Like my baby likes running yeah. now, and he's yeah. so catching like, everywhere. Going back to my earlier to, question, I was yeah. trying to code, but I'm told that I, I, I can say it. <laughs> A, t a, a young teenager masturbating, yeah. is that normal? Well, you, you can't say whether it's normal or not, okay. depending on what is going on there. Lovely. Because again, I see parents, um, their children are playing with their pennies, you know, maybe seven, eight, and they say it's masturbation, and I say that's not masturbation, maybe that's the first toy he discovered. So you need to find out, Oi. there are so many reasons people masturbate, so there is not, it's not one. Okay. I mean, so for example, what we do now check is check the patterns, right? I know, t I know some teenagers that they only masturbate after they have had um, a fight with their parents. Right, so and you see, masturbation becomes a problem when it gets to addictive stage. And addiction is when it becomes uncontrollable, which is which is which, 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 that's why usually it is discouraged, you mm -hmm. know, because it now becomes uncontrollable, compulsive appetite for a sexual mm -hmm. activity that keeps reoccurring, mm -hmm. right? So, you want to check the pattern if your child is masturbating, don't just go there and say it's normal, or don't yeah. just go there yeah. and say, yeah, man. you need to find <laughs> out how does it masturbate, <laughs> at what point does it masturbate, how does it do this. Once you check the patterns, okay, so you, you're saying you, we have a conversation with that child and say, when do you do it? How do you do it? Observe yeah, you, 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 need, you need to observe and, and, and have that conversation. Yes. Okay, yes. So you don't just give him that privacy and say, oh, you're Yeah, because, because that helps you know when to reach out to a professional. And please, parents, you know that you are not skilled in that area. So let your child talk to a professional and you should take your child there by yourself. I know we have this thing in Nigeria to say, uh, you, so you, they put, a lot of ch parents put their children to our office, they never come with them. And I say, you need to come. Your child is your child, no matter what it does. Unfortunately, right? we have to run question. Question. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. He says, what does your guest mean by telling your child who he is? Hmm. Your child's identity. Right, self worth, self self acceptance. Right, let's say you are the best of your kind. You know, there, there, there is none like you. You are yeah, free to make mistakes. You are human. But yeah. I think if there's anything you want to achieve from having this series continuously for the next film, a couple of months or so, is to let people know that listen, there's help available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't know it all. We're parents. Yeah. There's no manual. Yes. We're, we're just learning. We were born. We were born, and we, we learned in a certain way. Yes, Manuals are not read. available. Yes. So people, yes, they're, they're, so. They're, they're now literatures you can read to help you educate. So. We, by bringing praise here every week, is letting people know, listen, there's information out there, you need knowledge to be able to know how to handle this children better because people have these issues. But thank you so much, praise. We're going to see you next week again by God's, yeah, grace. By God's grace. Hopefully we'll discuss another issue concerning uh, lots of mothers and fathers. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.